Hi everybody, thank you for stopping by my channel and welcome to Pisces season. Oh my goodness, Pisces energy is so lovely. It's soft, it's beautiful, it's still extremely powerful. It's like power in the softness. It's the zodiac sign of spirit itself. So today we are going to dive into uh, deepening our um, ability to harness current energies, to support our growth, and support our ability to manifest the things that we desire uh, for 2024, being such an abundant year and a year of strength, of that personal power, right? So, um, and as you know, I tap into Mercury and the moon so that I can find out direction from them um, where to take the conversation to best use energies. Mercury because um, because he's the the he's Hermes in Greek mythology. He's the messenger of the gods. He's the one that can give us real time information about what we need right now. So he's the go to guy for current information. And the moon for what we maybe don't see. Maybe it's not as obvious. It's also, as many of us know, the moon in the tarot is um, is the is a Piscean card, is Pisces. So as I dive into this, you'll be able to see that not just because it's Pisces season, it's pretty obvious about why we'd be having this conversation at this point, but you'll see that it goes a little bit deeper than that. Um, for uh for tapping into the moon and so when i tapped into mercury here's here's what i really mean by that when i tapped into mercury um he i got this image he, it just felt very calm very relaxed and i got this image around like a, this he's floating in a pool like he's in a floaty in the lazy river like He's got sunglasses on, he's got his refreshing beverage, and he's just chilling out. And so, you know, of course, like, you know, I giggle and, and yeah, right, it's, this is a water sign. It makes sense. But the message wasn't like, leave a message, I'm on vacation, I'm checked out. He says this, people say chillax. Do you remember that word, chillax? That literally just came to mind. Okay, this like chilled out, cool off, relaxed energy is the message. And then he defers to to the, the moon card. And this is what I'm saying that I meant by that previous statement of I'm moving in, he's pointing towards the moon card or the moon for information. I say moon card because of the, the tarot, right? He's saying, look to the moon for, for some more information at this point. And you're going to get a lot of knowledge about this this energy, this current energy. So I defer to the moon, again, looking at the tarot here and um, being able to see, again, that there's a storyline behind these energies that's, that's beautifully given in Greek and Roman mythology. And so I believe that one of the reasons that... <sighs> I don't know if that, that okay let's let's back up my personal belief is that we can better um, navigate our human experience as we tap into the current energies and work with them now we are part of a larger system we are part of the earth we are part of the solar system and the Sun is the is the guiding force is the guiding light for this entire the intelligence the organizer the um listening into the planets and giving them what they need and listening to like i said listening to what they have to say that this conversation is going on between the sun and all of the planets within the solar system and those conversations those energies that are held within each of the planets is available to us as well so tapping into our natural flow of energy by listening to the wisdom of the planets, which is really fun, in my opinion, to dive into the, the backstories, the origin. Who doesn't love a good origin story, right? Like I do, 
I love stories. So if you don't love stories, this might not be the channel for you. This is what you're going to get from me is stories, okay? And today we've got several stories here. So I suggest you grab a, uh, a drink. I love my coffee. And so grab a drink, settle in. We're going to spend some time together today. Um, but listening into those planets, getting the stories on the backstory so to understand their energies and um, and see how this resonates with what things that you're experiencing. And then, of course, um, you know, what, what can we do? So today we're going to talk about um, we're going to talk about the symbol of Pisces. Where did that where did that sim where, the fish? OK, we know fish swim in water. We know that the symbol is the two fish, but why? What's what? Why is it what? Why is it that that symbol? Okay, we're gonna then go into that's that's within Greek mythology. We're then gonna go into Roman mythology. Now, I do want to to share with you a little bit of insight um, on on that. So, Roman mythology is derived from Greek mythology. So the, the <clears throat> excuse me. So what we know as mythology. Uh, well, I guess there's mythology all over. There's Norse. There's so okay. So when we see Roman mythology, understanding that it was derived from or, or extracted from came from Greek mythology. So the first part of this, we're going to look at, at the Greek story, and all of our planets are named after the Ro from Roman gods from Roman mythology. But it all started with the Greek. Okay. So for the second part of this, to be able to, to go deeper in our knowledge of the Piscean energy um, and how it works, we're going to use Roman mythology, okay? And then we're going to draw some conclusions. We're going to start pulling apart. What are those attributes? How do, you know, how can we define based on these stories that have been given to us? How does that Piscean energy really work? And then, um, of course, I want to give you guys um, a really you know, helpful grounding practice so that you guys can use this energy and not feel like you're kind of spinning out or you're floating because we know that 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 Piscean energy is really floaty. It's really dreamy. And they want, of course, we want to be able to to have that space. We have to give ourselves time. It's a, a significant part of the creation process. But we don't want to lose traction with the many things that we had felt like we were just like, we were gaining traction on. We were like going, we're moving, we're, you know, stuff's happening in our lives, things that we, things that we wanted to put together, things that look like they're, you know, about to really, you know, really be able to, to, um, I don't, I don't, is it meld together? Things that really want, are ready to uh, coalesce into something bigger. There we go. We don't want to lose traction on those things, and yet we're being called to slow down, chill out, like uh, like Mercury says. So this practice is going to be able to help you be able to do both. Okay. All right. So first of all, the symbol of Pisces. The symbol of Pisces is it looks like a crescent moon look pointing towards the left and a crescent moon pointing towards the right with um, a horizontal line in the middle. Now it's not a crescent moon, it is fish, right? So uh, so we have um, a fish point this two fish held together by a ribbon is what they're held together by. All right. so what what is that? What are those two fish? Who are the two fish? Why two fish? Let's, again, aside from the fact that fish swim in water and Pisces is a water sign. <clears throat> It goes back to the story of, of, um, oh my gosh, Aphrodite. I'm like, how do I forget her name? Aphrodite and her son, Eros. Now we're all familiar with Aphrodite and, but maybe not as much with her son, Eros. So this gets really, it gets really interesting. Okay. This, you're, I hope you guys have as much fun as I did putting all of this together and sharing it with you. So, okay, so we'll start back to, let's go back to the beginning, all right? This is, we're going back to the Genesis story of, of Greek mythology. Okay, in the beginning, there was chaos. All right, now at this point, what I'd like to do is use, uh, you know, some visual props, some visual aids here, and, um, and as you know, many of us may know, be aware of that 
the, uh, let's see here, we could do this a way that, there we go, hi guys, okay, all right, so let's see, um, we know that, um, we know that the, or you may or may not know, <laughs> if you're familiar with tarot, that the moon card is a Pisces card, and it is um, also very often is um, red or um, defined as a chaos card. I mean, we talk about lunacy, but it literally looks like these, these animals are kind of going wild here. They're, you know, howling at the moon. Um, and so this, this, this card is attributed to chaos quite often. It's so deep though, you guys, there's so much depth to these cards. And then here's the moon card also about un, um, um, not quite manifested, but you can see reality. Okay. So another version of maybe it looks like they're looking at themselves, another version of themselves across this valley here across the ravine. And it's the, the it's dark. They you know they're not a lot of light on that, but they know that it's there. So it's what 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 this is this um, illustration is pointing to is an unmanifested reality. But let's 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 not get too far ahead of ourselves here, okay? So again, in the beginning there was chaos, and oftentimes the moon is is um, read as as chaos, okay, and or interpreted as chaos. But in in Greek mythology, chaos actually meant an opening, a void, a yawn, okay? And it was essentially an opening space for something new to come out of. So there was just, that's all there was. This chaos was just an opening. And the first primordial force that was birthed into this or came out of chaos was Eros. Eros means love. Now that plays really nicely with this, this realization that many people who are waking up to the fact that we are loved, that's that at the core of ourselves, at the basis, the fundamentals of all that exists is love. That will, so that, that coincides. Now, because love came first and was embodied in Eros, all other beings or celestial bodies or even <clears throat> excuse me just natural forces of the universe <clears throat> cosmic forces there we go Co excuse me i apologize for that you guys Co all other cosmic forces now had so oh, i apologize so it was not just love but he also embodied procreation so they were able to produce more and they were able to be filled have substance within themselves which was love so they were able to produce and they were able to um, to be able to have substance themselves, which is, which if you think about it, <clears throat> and I think it was Plato that said, um, that love is the most powerful force, <clears throat> excuse me, in the universe. And it is the driving force between all things good. It is the beauty of a flower opening. It is why the trees grow. It's why the wind blows. Uh, it is the reason that, um, people form civilizations. All things that are good come from love. So, so there's Eros, and then we have um, we have from there we have then the abyss uh, is birthed, um, or Tartaros. We have um, Mother Gaia that is, that comes, Mother Gaia, and then um, um, Uranus. They mate. So Uranus is, is the sky, Father Sky. Gaia is Mother Earth. The two of them mate and they have children. And the children that Mother Gaia is, not all of them are pleasing visually to Uranus. So he wants them, he, he throws them into Tartarus. He throws them into the abyss. Well, Mother Gaia loves her children, naturally, and she doesn't want this to be their fate. So she asks her son, one of her sons, which is Kronos or Saturn, to castrate his father, and uh, while making while making love, of course, um, and um, so that he they'll stop producing children. Okay, and so he does this, and he frees the other brothers and sisters. Now the ones that he had tossed into um, into the abyss or, or Tartarus, 
they're the titans. Those are the, the abominations is essentially what he, his feeling on, on these children. Um, and they become the titans, okay? Now, they also birth the, the, um, the beginning of the, the Olympians, which is, which is Saturn and Kronos, okay? So he essentially dethrones his father, which separates uh, the heaven from the earth and creates time itself. Chronos, chronological time. Um, so he creates time. And now the reason I brought this story up is because at, when he was castrated and Saturn or Kronos throws the, the cutoff parts into the ocean, this is where Aphrodite is birthed. Aphrodite comes from the, the foam of the sea and the life force energy from the, 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 the tossed in parts. Okay. So this is where Aphrodite, and she's the goddess of love. She's the goddess of beauty, all of these things, um, that we know that Aphrodite is, um, desire, sex. Okay. So, um, but she's very dynamic. There is depth to Aphrodite's and I believe we may go into that. It may be next week that we go into that because we definitely need to give her her, her spotlight, especially with the lunar eclipse coming up at the end of March in Libra, Venus. So Aphrodite is Venus. Venus is the, the Roman name for her. And Venus is the ruling planet for Libra. So I think that we're gonna, she's going to get her, her, her spotlight here real soon. And she, she plays a big role in this story as well. So we have Aphrodite that's birthed. She's this goddess of beauty, goddess of love, and um, and she actually has um, children that are different facets of love. And one of those children. So okay, so let's talk. Let's just jump back for just a moment to Eros. Okay, so Eros was this primordial force, this original being, this original cosmic force energy. Okay. And we don't hear about him ever again in Greek mythology. He doesn't show up again, actually, until he's birthed to Aphrodite and her lover, Ares, which is, and he is Cupid. All right. Now, Ares being the father gives an explanation to why Cupid has a bow and arrow, which is commonly used in in war right this it's a it's a it's a weapon so so we have cupid here which is typically depicted as a little baby is just cute but he is the embodiment of love he grows up to actually be the embodiment of desire okay and he has two arrows that he has the ability to to shoot into to, to launch into someone and have them stricken with love on the golden arrows he also has, like I said, there's a second one. He has, I believe they're lead arrows, okay? And the lead ones are the exact opposite of love. It would be recoil, love, um, it would be hate, it would be the, you know, rejection, okay? So, so he has these two arrows and he can do either. He can shoot one, one or the other. And at one point, um, to give a good example of this, Apollo was actually um, hackling and giving him a hard time about fumbling his his bow because he's younger, right? Um, so, well, well, he's younger, but as he grows up into a young man, he becomes beautiful. He's stunningly unparalleled beauty in this in this young man, and he he has the like I said, it was desire. And he has the ability just by gazing upon him to invoke desire and lust. So he is a very, very powerful force. And again, um, if he is, if he was originally Eros, he would be the most powerful force. Think about how powerful love has been in all of our lives. So so he is one of the most powerful beings and he's this beautiful young man apollo is giving him a hard time about fumbling his bow and so um cupid all right cupid shoots him with the um the golden arrow so that he um falls in love with someone he had been admiring i want to say her name is daphne but, but it means Laurel and okay. So it means her name means Laurel. 
He falls in love with her, but he shoots her with the with the lead arrow. And the lead arrow may obviously she recoils his love. So every time he advances, every time he proposes, every time he, you know, makes a gesture of love, she rejects him. She rejects him. She rejects him to the point where she finally goes to a um, god of the river and asks him to turn her into a tree. And that tree is now called the laurel laurel bush. Okay. And it's, it's a very important bush um, to, uh, to Apollo. But that's just a really good example of how he <laughs> uses his arrows. Uh, okay, so now, okay, so let's go to Earth, all right? We're going to head to Earth, and there is this young woman that is birthed. And she, well, okay, so she's, she becomes a young woman, and she is the most beautiful woman on the planet. She has, uh, again, uh, much like him, of unparalleled beauty. And her story, her backstory is very similar to that of Aphrodite's where people just gaze upon her. People just want to admire her. People just want to adore her. They want to even possess her. But nobody really wants to get to know her. It's not actually deep love for her as a person. It's just people would come from miles around. Uh, miles away just to be able to see and to gaze upon her beauty and they would actually begin because her beauty was so captivating people stopped going to the temple of Aphrodite or Venus okay so this story okay so as we I, I apologize we jumped to planet earth we jumped to this this story here and I for, I did not mention that this now is a this story is written by a Roman author so we've now we've now switched over to the the Roman mythology and the story is found in a novel called the golden ass yes you heard me correctly that's like you know the cross between a horse and a donkey <laughs> But the Golden Ass is the name of the novel and the story of Eros and um, this young woman whose name is Psyche. Their story is, is unraveled in, in this novel. And you don't get a really good idea of, because we, we, we know that, that Pisces is that like Cupid, that love, that energy, right? We, it has that in it. It's a soft baby maybe even. Um, it has a, it's a very strong driving force, but we don't actually really understand the fullness of Pisces energy until we go into Psyche, okay, Psyche's story. So the young woman, she's beautiful, people were coming, she's, um, she's actually influencing them in a way that they stop going to the temple of Venus, um, and Aphrodite, and this infuriates Aphrodite. She, first of all, she's being compared to a goddess. And if you know anything about the gods and goddesses, mortals have no business comparing themselves or having any rights to anything that they claim. Okay? And so, <laughs> which, you guys, is what one of the biggest paradigm shifts that we're seeing happening as the power is going back to people versus being this hierarchy. Um, is that we actually do get to invoke the God self within us and we do get to compare ourselves and become the, these gods and goddesses within our own physical life, okay? Our own reality as we create, okay? Become, we, we embody the creator within. Okay, so, so Aphrodite is furious. She's angry and she has to put an end to this woman who is stealing her glory, right? Taking attention away from her and so she calls her son Cupid and she tells him to put an arrow, the golden arrow, in, in Psyche, casting this love spell so that she will fall in love with the most hideous beast of a man that he could possibly find. So he goes into her room at night and he creeps in with the intention of, of shooting her. He draws back his bow and just like Apollo said, he fumbles. But in his defense, because her beauty is so striking, he is taken back with her beauty. And he ends up piercing his own skin with his own Cupid's arrow. Of course, having her fall in love with him. So we go back to Psyche here and back to her life. She has no idea, by the way, that he ever entered her room. 
So back to her story, she she has all these admirers, but she doesn't have any real suitors, anybody who actually loves her for who she is. And her sister, she has two sisters, now they have. So her father actually ends up thinking or begins to thinking that maybe she's cursed. And so he goes to an oracle and he asks the oracle about who she is to marry. And the oracle says she will not marry a human. She is actually going to marry a winged beast. Now, we all know Cupid is winged, all right? So the oracle tells her father to dress her dress dress in funeral clothing take her to this cliff's edge and lay her there um so that she would be able to meet the, the um the beast the being that was going to marry her so the father does this he lays her at the cliff's edge and when she, that evening a, a wind a soft warm wind blows across her and it puts her to sleep and while she's asleep, this wind picks her up. It's the west wind. The wind picks her up and it carries her to when she wakes outside of this beautiful temple. No, not, it's not a temple. It's a beautiful castle. Okay, this beautiful castle. And when she goes in, it's phenomenal. The grandeur is, is over the top. It's the luxury. Okay. She goes in and then she hears a voice. And this voice welcomes her and invites her to have a feast, to take a long bath, and to begin pampering herself. She began to learn that this voice that she was hearing was that of her new husband. And he told her that he would give her all that she wanted and she could enjoy you know, the palace with one request that she not look upon him. So he would see her only at night. He would come and visit her at night. And she grew to love him deeply. And is anybody else getting like Beauty of the Be Beauty and the Beast vibes from this? <laughs> like that's kind of I'm feeling. So during the days she would have beautiful meals. She would be able to 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 enjoy all the things of about the palace, but she began to get bored. She loved her husband, but she began to get bored. And so she asked him if her sisters could come visit. And of course, he wanted her to be happy. So he sent the same wind that carried her to bring her sisters. And her sisters come and they're they're jealous, okay? They're just, they're out of their minds with like how good she has it. So because of their jealousy, they began to plant seeds of doubt. Now remember, her name is Psyche, Right? They begin to plant seeds of doubt in her mind and remind her about what the oracle had told their father, that maybe this is a hideous beast. And that's why he, even though he sounds lovely and he is, you know, offering you all these wonderful things for your, this beautiful life, maybe he in fact is this, this, this beast. And so they talk her into, because now she's, she's fearful. She's like, you're right. I don't know. So acting now out of fear, they tell her, and she does, to arm herself with a knife and to take a light into the room, shine the light on him at night and be able to, and, and see him while he's sleeping. And so she gets, she gets, she lights a lantern, she takes a knife and she goes to his bedside and she, and she lights the, the, you know, she casts the light upon his face and much like he experienced, she's taken back with his beauty and she fumbles not the arrow but she fumbles the lantern and she spills lantern oil on him and he awakes with not only this physical wound he awakes from uh, or for, from a physical wound but he's upset because she broke a promise and so he flees he goes he flies away she's absolutely distraught Remember, she had fallen in love with this man. And her sisters, her sisters, they're like, wow, okay, well, he left her. Maybe we have a chance. And so they started plotting that they would be able to go to the palace and they would be able to attract him to them. And so they go to that same cliff's edge that she went to to be carried uh, to the palace and expecting the west wind to pick them up, as had done for them as well. 
expecting the wind to pick them up and, and carry them. They lunge off the cliff and plummet to their deaths. Okay. Well, here, poor Psyche, heartbroken, distraught, overridden with sorrow. She goes on this journey looking for her, her love. And without food, without water, just wandering, looking for him anywhere she can think. And she comes to, she even goes to the temples of Hera and Demeter and asks them to please help her to be able to regain um, this, you know, connection with him, to be able to help her find them. Um, and hopefully she can mend things. And they said, oh dear, we, <laughs> you lovely, you lovely woman, uh, we would love to help you, but girl, Aphrodite is after you. <laughs> she, we can't help. Aphrodite was enlisting any soldiers interested with the promise of kisses from Aphrodite, Venus, the goddess of love, um, promising them kisses if they can give her any information on where she can find Psyche. So, um, yeah, they're like, we're, we're not helping. We're not, we're not doing this. Um, okay, so finding out this news that, that Aphrodite, Venus is after her. I keep using both. I could just say Venus at this point because it, it is the Roman version. So Venus is after her, so she decides to face her fear to face it and we see here let's see i'm gonna use my crystal okay use my selenite wand um so we see here like if this little crustacean were to be psyche in her maybe her well of tears maybe that's what this water is emotional water and tarot means emotion she's facing this she's facing this whole scene with the intention of taking this journey, do you see the pathway there? With the intention of taking this journey over the mountains through the pillars. Now the pillars, when we're, we're looking at the tarot, represent a goal, okay? Goal posts, um, being able to, to make it through trials and tribulations in order to achieve something. And she's ready to take this, okay? She's ready. So being as ready as she is, Aphrodite says, okay, you want my forgiveness. You want me to stop coming after you and not intend to destroy you for taking the attention away from me. So I will grant you my forgiveness if you can pass my, my, my trials. If you can pass these, these tasks that I give you. So she says, sure. All right. I'm willing to do it. Why? For love, right? Driving force for love. And she wasn't the one even hit with the arrow. She truly loved this man. Okay. So, so she, so, okay. So the first task that Aphrodite, I'm sorry, Venus gives her, she gathers together wheat, barley, poppy seeds. Um, uh, let's see what, uh, lentils, all manner of these little, small, little, you know, little seeds and beans and, 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 and whatnot. And she amasses a, a huge amount of them. They're all mixed together. And she tells her, she tells, um, she tells Psyche that she needs to sort these, um, before nightfall. Psyche agrees, not knowing exactly how she's going to do this, but she does agree to it. And Aphrodite, Venus leaves to leave her to the task. She has a party to attend. And so she leaves her to the task. And um, this aunt was passing by and heard what, what had taken place in the, in, the, in the unsurmounting task that was laid before Psyche. And he offers to help her, offers her assistance. And, and she accepts and he enlists his own army, the colony of ants, and they sort out every one of them before nightfall. And Aphrodite, <laughs> not real happy about this, says, okay, all right, I'll give you your ne next one, your next trial, next tribulation. She tells her that she needs to go to this herd of rams, okay? Now, if you remember, this is what, I found this kind of interesting key point here, rams, if you think back to Cupid's father, which is Aries, that's the um, the ram is the the zodiac symbol of of Aries. Anyway, so she's to she's to go to these rams across the river, and they're huge, they're large, they're giant rams, 
and they have this golden fleece she is to, to extract she is to bring back golden fleece from these rams and she approaches this side of the river okay she approaches this side of the river and she's looking at those rams who are just they're mean they are not nice have you ever met a ram they are they are relentless they are going they're not nice okay <laughs> so she's she said you know what she's feeling pretty pretty you know not not real great about this in fact to the point that she decides that she would rather surrender to the bottom of the river than try to attempt this one and the river hears her and the river offers her a piece of wisdom and says if you wait until the noonday sun and there's a warm breeze that blows across the rams they take a nap and you'll be able to get the fleece while they're napping she does this and she succeeds yet again So we know Aphrodite is fuming at this point and really wants to stick it to her. So she gives her another way of proving herself, sends her to another rampant flowing river that has, that has these cliff edges on the sides of it with rocks falling down and serpents all over the place. She accepts. She is standing there not sure how she's going. She's supposed to amass water from this river. She's not sure how she's going to go about it. Again, standing there in front of the river. How is this possible? But she knows the task ahead of her. And she has accepted the task ahead of her. Well, Zeus, who's Jupiter. Okay, again, we're now into to Roman. Jupiter sees this and looks upon her with mercy he sends an eagle to pick up a vase or jar and to use the jar to amass this water from this rapid flowing river so she's again successful and aphrodite has just about had it but does give her one last task that she believes is not even possible She's, there's no way that she's going to be able to achieve this one. She sends her to Hades. She sends her to the underworld. She gives her a box, a golden box. And she says, you go to the underworld and you ask Persephone, who is the goddess or the queen of the underworld, Hades' wife, very beautiful woman, ask her to to put in the box a fragment of her beauty and bring it to me. Now I'd like to insert this card, the tower card, all right? This imagery and this tower card is really perfect for this story, okay? Because she heads that way to the underworld and she comes upon this tower, okay? Now we all know in the tarot, nobody really likes the tower, okay? The tower brings things down to the core. If you look at this light all the way through the body of the tower, straight into the water, which is the emotional body or the water sign, right? So bring it straight down to the emotional body. All right, so putting that there, she comes upon this tower which is an entryway into the underworld. And when she enters the tower, the tower begins speaking to her and also like the river offers her wisdom. And the tower, what the tower shares with her, the rules of the underworld. He lets her know that she can tame the three headed dog, Severus, by feeding him um, a honey cake. She let, he, the tower lets her know that she needs to pay, is it Charon? Charon, the, the, uh, the, the one who takes her across the river Styx. She needs to pay him for, for passage. Uh, let's her know that she cannot eat anything, do not partake of any food or beverage while in the underworld. And the final word of advice um, and rules of the underground is to ignore the dead souls. 
So she follows this advice perfectly eloquently and she's now in the palace and she does not partake of the of the food or drink or even the luxurious seating that has been made available for her. Um, she sits on the floor and she eats only the bread that she has brought with her. She then meets Persephone and she relays this request from, um, from Venus, asking her for an essence or essence of fragment of her, her beauty. And Persephone is very willing and graciously agrees. She generously fills the box and sends Psyche on her way. So Psyche now is ascending the underworld and as she's ascending, she begins to get really curious. And as again, and she's continued to send the curiosity grows and grows and grows to become overwhelming at this point that she now has uh, made it out of the underworld and she sits on the ground and she has to look in the box. She's got to look in the box. What is Persephone's, what is a, a fragment of Persephone's beauty look like? I've got to know. So she sits down and she opens the box and lo and behold, it is not in fact a, a fragment of Persephone's, Persephone's beauty. It is in fact this cloud of black smoke that sedates her and it knocks her out. At this point, Eros or Cupid has recovered from his oil wound <laughs> And remember, he had shot himself with his own arrow and that love that he feels for her and it was expanded upon with the time he spent with her. It has now, is now overwhelming and he goes to her and he lifts her up and he awakens her. And he then goes to Jupiter and he asks, is pleased with Jupiter to who is the brother of, of uh, you know, Venus, Aphrodite, Zeus. Um, Zeus is Jupiter. Um, he, he pleads with him to please have my mother stop tormenting my beloved psyche. And we know if we know Greek mythology, we know that humans are not to gaze upon the fullness or the glory of gods because it can, it can, they can uh, d be dispelled. They can, they can blow and uh, blow up. I'm, uh, disintegrate disintegrate that's the word they can disintegrate disintegrate simply by looking at a god so but he he conveys his love to jupiter and asks him for for help in the, on for his assistance and jupiter has already helped psyche once and um you know shows favor to her so he gives her ambrosia thereby making her a goddess and she becomes the goddess of the soul. Now we all know that the Pisces energy, Pisces zodiac sign is the sign of the soul. So Psyche is the goddess of Pisces. The ruling planet for Pisces is Jupiter and Neptune. Okay. We're not getting into Neptune, but okay. But Jupiter. So it stands to reason. And she becomes a goddess of the soul and she and Cupid marry and they have a child whose name means pleasure. So when we're looking at, so now let's draw some conclusions from the story. So one of, one of my, one of my most favorite pieces to this is how spirit answers us in our time of need or always is always asked. It's not in a time of need. It's in a moment where we know the task at hand, when we have knowledge of what is needed or what is wanted, what's on the other side of these pillars here, what is here, right? We have an idea of what is here. And spirit answers us in the same way that the ants responded, the river responded, the tower responded, and the eagle, Jupiter, the god of good fortune, the planet of good fortune and good luck. 
all of these respond to her simply by her knowing because when it comes to creating our own reality we must know what is wanted next in order to have clear divine in, um, response so here's the deal guys we have a response from this cause these cosmic forces from the support and guidance of our, of our higher self our own spirit who is amassing cosmic forces on our behalf to answer every request every desire every want every need that we have the thing is is that we are so chaotic again chaos we are so chaotic within our own minds not the same as an empty space chaos but we're we our minds and our bodies are so filled constantly with activity and thoughts that we haven't we don't always get a real precise real precision of the intention that we want or that we intend that we want to see manifest in our life the intention we want to see manifested in our own life so we're getting sort of like these diluted or or, or a little bit only a little bit because we don't have enough focus on only one thing so when it comes to the divine the word divine itself meaning undivided so would be a consistent focus an undivided focus on a particular energy or intention to then be able to see how our higher self our spirit is be, be able to respond to that human part of us that's asking and have it then manifest and be fully manifested fully manifested new version of our life of ourselves or whatever big or small okay this seems pretty big here but but big or small um nothing there's not one is more important than the other all things all things are great in the eyes of of the universe um and your higher self if they're important to you they're important to your spirit your soul so all things are able to be then revealed and manifested when we can have a specific clear knowledge of what it is that we need or want and be able to expect that now she wasn't really expecting the how it would happen remember psyche when she was approaching her tasks she just knew that she had agreed to him she knew what the the outcome that the intended outcome was the completion of these tasks and she had a love love driving force behind it so this is how spirit is always answering us constantly i love in this how it's not just psyche that is the pure essence of the only essence the only her her embodiment is not the only part of this piscean energy because we see that it's love itself that is influencing every energy it is eros it is cupid it is even Aphrodite, if you think about like children being an extension of their parents and Cupid being an extension of Aphrodite and of, um, of, of uh, Aries, it's their union that comes together that creates this pleasure, this pleasurable outcome. Okay, so if we look at how it's at how the soft wind, there we go, that's another really good one. We look at the soft wind it's very subtle blows in you know the the ability the the wisdom or the capability to be able to achieve what it is you know the soft wind carries them um to to the palace of cupid cupid sends this it requests this from from the soft wind right um and, and it carries her them forward um it's, it's just such it's just a subtle energy it is the wind that 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 softens soothes her to sleep softens the the rams to sleep it's the response from the river who's talking to her nature itself is talking to her the animals are talking to her you know the gods are talking to her we are always being responded to whenever we have a desire or a, an outcome that we we would like to see happen in our lives but it's all of these forces that are coming together that are working together that we can really begin to see 
the full picture, the full scope of what is possible. We also have to look here at the seeds of doubt that caused her to act in fear that caused then a wound in not only her lover, but a wound of her deeply. So taking a look at the energy that we act from is extremely important. Are we, are we filling our minds and the energy in our bodies instead with pure spirit, but instead with seeds of doubt on things that we have believed that are not accurate? And we know that they're not accurate within us because fear doesn't feel good. Worry, stress, all of those lower level emotions, right? That don't feel good. Those are inaccurate or out of vibrational sync with our soul, with our spirit. And therefore, if acted upon from that energy will create a disastrous or less than desirable outcome. These are all really great points that we can take from, from these stories and to begin to deepen our understanding of how Pisces energy operates and can support us. Now, one of the big things that I've been talking about here is that clarity of what your desire is. So at this point, I'd like to share with you what my guides have given me. And, and, and here's the thing, guys, a friend shared with me this practice. Now, just like the answers did not come from one source, right? That it was ant, it was the river, it was the, it was the eagle, it was the, uh, the tower itself. It was awareness itself, but not from one particular, um, you know, source, uh, medium. There we go. Not one medium. It came from all these different directions. That's, again, another key pointer to all the ways that our higher self, our spirit, the universe is speaking to us and answering us. And a dear friend of mine gave me this practice or shared with me this practice. And I thought is extremely fitting for, um, for being able to feel grounded because as I began personally, as I began, as I began feeling into this Piscean energy, I could feel this sort of floaty. I could feel this like, like, oh no, I don't want to, like I shared in the beginning, like I don't want to disconnect from the momentum that I have with the things that I am you know, moving forward that have been coming together and moving forward. And I'm really enjoying being actively engaged in. So when I asked my guides for information on how to navigate this, what they said was to begin using your human awareness to start a pinpointing all of the things that you have asked for in the past that are now manifested into your life. It's essentially appreciation. It's essentially counting your blessings. But what happens is it connects us with that awareness in a grounded way. Also, of course, lots of water and eat well. Okay, rest, relax, but being able to count your blessings in a way that, that sort of softens this massive drive that we may have had, especially with this power up energy that we experienced um, all through uh, February with this, uh, you know, Mars, uh, Pluto, you know, these, these really, en these powerful energies that are, that are um, very active right now that are literally there. They are oh, all about power in their, their own way. They're about power. So, um, so with those intense energies of, of activity of moving forward, now um, we can now just change a little bit that, that direction and begin to sort of let ourselves off the hook for just a moment. Because if you remember in the story, what she had wanted came after she was sedated. <laughs> now, I'm not saying sedate yourself. That is literally what I am not saying, okay? There, I wanted some clarity on that so, or, or some, uh, uh, you know, I want the disclaimer on that, okay? I am not saying that. What I am saying is meditate. What I am saying is get really quiet with yourself. And then when you get really quiet, you guys, this energy, it makes it really easy to be able to feel the awareness that is all around us. If I may, I would like to offer two stories, personal stories that were invoked inside of me as I began putting these pieces together for, for today's conversation. And, um, and I think that are just, just really highlight some of the, some of the things that, that were experienced in these stories. Okay. So the first one is, 
the tower here. Now the tower was talking to her. We know that the river is, is um, we know the, these are all, hmm, I don't want to say natural because synthetic works also and I'll, I'll, I will, I will, you know, my example sh demonstrates that, okay? But now we have, we have the animals talking to her. Well, I've, I've, I've listed off before all of these ways, all of these medias, mediums of, of, of messages being able to get to psyche, right? The thing is, is that your spirit, your soul is not 100% your body, only a portion of it is. And you can begin in this energy as you quiet yourself, as you allow yourself to expand a little bit in, in, in the sense of peace, you can feel the awareness. This, what, what appears to be empty space, is awareness. Every single thing that we have, every single thing that exists, exists spiritually first. It exists vibrationally first. Therefore, everything has awareness. Like this tower talking to her. Okay. My sister invited me one evening over to her house. This was several years ago. It actually was her boyfriend's house. He was working late that night. And it was the first time I had ever gone over to his, his place. Um, and, um, but he was working, he had to work late. So she wanted to know if I wanted to come over and it, it was like a new moon or, a, or something like this. And we, she wanted to do like a, a candle ritual and, um, intention setting ritual. So we got together and she's, we sit down on the rug and she's lighting all these candles. And while she's lighting the candles and I'm sitting on the rug, the rug starts talking to me and is conveying this message of somebody not liking the rug and i'm like this is interesting okay so i asked her i said does your boyfriend not like the rug in in his in his home this rug here and she asks why and so i, I let her know and she <laughs> starts laughing and she says i was just cleaning this rug um she was sweeping it off actually she was i was just sweeping off this rug before you came and i was thinking how much i didn't like this rug and i said well the rug heard you and <laughs> so you may want to be aware we all you know don't have no idea how much our energy our thoughts how powerful they are and are impacting everything around us again supporting this direction given to me by my higher self about how to use pisces energy to feel grounded and still connected um and yet using it um to the best of my ability by connecting with spirit i asked for this and spirit brought me this i asked for this and this manifested the life i have now is something that i had desired previously and now i have okay because our thoughts our energy and our body are impacting everything okay so the next example of this is of of um that was invoked in me or um you know, I thought of when I, when I was bringing this, um, this information together was when I, before any of my children were born, I communicated, they communicated with me. I met all three of my children before they, before I was pregnant with them. And they were all, they all had a hand in, in my, in the, the conceiving the, the the details <laughs> and I don't want to sound like you know the, the act of but what I want to say is that I can see how circumstances were shifted and changed in order to promote an opportunity for them to be conceived at that time that's a good way of putting it okay and that's what happened I could see that looking back I could see how these things took place and their particular influence the one that most came to mind here was my oldest, she is a Pisces sun. She is a Pisces moon and she's a cancer um, uh, rising. The energy that she brought with her. Now, every, I wanna say that every single one of them are the exact personality that was communicating with me prior to conceiving, birthing, getting to know them. Literally the exact person, they are themselves, okay? so. 
the energy that I was feeling with her was very subtle. It was very soft. It was very sweet. It was very kind. And each one of my children, just like her, told me when I was pregnant with them what they were going to look like before, when, before while I was pregnant. When they when they took body, you know, when they when they were born, they, what they would look like, you know, what their body would look like. My daughter told me that she was Cupid. I literally, because I'm a mom, I'm going to cry, right? <laughs> so, so, um, she told me she was Cupid, which until I had heard the arrows story, I didn't know. I didn't know how, I didn't put those two together. So again, this is this, this love that is behind, you know, cherubs, this, this cherub, right? The love that's behind is also a piece and a part of that Pisces energy. And that's also confirmation that around us is awareness always. That before we are born, we exist. After we leave our consciousness from this body, extract our consciousness or withdraw our consciousness from this body, we exist. And we're exactly who we are. Now, there are varying degrees of closeness to source and focus upon density into physical form. But the, the afterlife or what we have seen beyond the veil here is extremely dynamic. And we are who we are. I just had to share that, that piece here with us. Because another element... Like we know, water is an emotional, um, it, 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 demonst um, it is the sign, water is the sign of emotions <laughs> in the zodiac, in the tarot, okay? So, this is to say that this moment in time, while the sun is in Pisces, it is a time to get out of our heads and get into our bodies by feeling everything. And I am, I, I promise I'm getting to the, to the, to the, um, you know, this, um, this practice, I, I'm getting to it. I, I, I promise you guys, but this is a, this is a, a time to be able to withdraw our attention from an overactive mind. This is a time to feel our way. This morning, I was feeling extremely condensed. I was feeling a pressure, uh, like, you know, just before a diamond becomes a diamond, that coal is pressurized. I could feel the squeeze on me. And so I kept saying to myself, I just kept saying to myself over and over again, I love you, I love you, I love you. Whether I was talking to the, the <laughs> energy of the squeeze, whether I was talking to myself, I don't know, and it didn't really matter. I just kept saying the words, I love you, I love you, I love you. Meanwhile, allowing myself to really feel the squeeze happening and knowing that I am not this, that's not who I am. I am the awareness and also the body. Just like Eros was the spirit or this primordial cosmic force of love, he was. And just like you and I are, we are liquid love. We are the embodiment of love. We are birthed from love. He also then was born a God, of course, but he was born and you are too. I am not going to deny that every one of us are extensions of source energy and we all have creator abilities just like the gods, okay? And we invoke that God spark within us by creating, okay? By being interested and fascinated. And I've, I'll say this probably every single video, okay? But being able to allow myself to feel, knowing that I'm not this, I can have this experience and not be fearful of this experience of the squeeze, not try to push it away, not try to wiggle out of it, but literally just let myself feel it, saying, I love you, I love you, I love you, over and over again. And I could feel, again, like I said, the activation of the awareness around me. And pretty soon the awareness around me that is also me, spirit me, was able to envelope around and begin to soak up that squeeze and use that energy to harness into 
into an expanded feeling. An expansion. We know that when we're in a squeeze, it means we are about to expand. Just like the tension when you pull back a rubber band, that tension that's that's held there for a moment, and then ping, that's, we, we can take comfort in a squeeze at this point. And I did feel an expansion take place within me as I allowed myself to, to feel into it. And the, the, the squeeze could be happening for days, weeks. That's fine. Let it. It could happen for just a few moments. Let it. But it will be much more comfortable if you love it. That's who you are, is love. Okay. Now, I would appreciate if this message resonates with you. It would be kind to like, to subscribe, to support the channel here. Um, and leave comments letting me know what you're experiencing, how you're experiencing this, and if this practice that I'm giving you works for you. Okay? Thank you so much. And thank you for your support, all of you. Okay, so this practice is very simple, <laughs> as long as it took us to get here. But, um, but it was a fun ride for me, and I hope it was for you guys as well. So, um, so now what my friend had mentioned to me, this practice that she has done in the past and has found extremely powerful, is from a place of meditative place, from a quieted, loving, kind, gentle place inside, she then writes a letter to herself at the beginning of each year as if she is reading it the beginning of the following year or at the end of that year, describing all of the things that she had accomplished as if it was already done. Now, we may, you may have heard many, many times that in order to ask for something that you would like manifested, in order to, to, to be able to receive what it is that you're asking for, it's important to do that from a place of already having it. So her suggesting doing this at the beginning of the year, and I wrote mine out, and I could see how I was in a very different place rather than pushing the energy out to try to make something happen which then always backfires on us and creates frustration and a sense of I'm not doing this right and you know th those kind of things and I set this intention but it didn't happen we we all have we've all been there like trying to figure out our way to how we manifest how you manifest is by coming out in front of it and coming to it from an already doneness energy so you want to get really really quiet you want to be at total peace and and feel a sense of love for yourself a sense of love for life and when you're there when you've achieved that moment and you can feel blissful inside of your body ask your higher self to help you write that letter to you of the things and I'll tell you there are things that went on my list that from my human perspective I would not have tried to push for right? I would have been like, that's kind of, you know, that's a little bit big. That's a little bit bigger than what I can wrap my mind around being possible in this moment. But because I had the confidence of my higher self, who is divinity, undivided, and absolutely knows that anything that we desire is possible and has already dreamed it up. And in, her, in my higher self's case, in fact, is already done. So she's like, yes, it's done. Totally helped me be able to come from, from that perspective and wrote out this letter, even naming months. And you can, this is really fantastic time to be doing this. It's not that we're too far into the year. I mean, we're, we haven't even hit spring yet, right? It's a really great time because we're about to have a Saturn great teacher who's in Pisces, all right, telling us to to, to harness wisdom from our, our superpower, our higher self. We have, um, and we have, it's the, it's Saturn. Oh my goodness. Oh, I can't believe I, this, I just spaced this. Saturn and another, is it Mercury? Is it Mercury? Oh my gosh. I, 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 there's a Kazemi happening on February 28th, which is the day that this video will will post, will land. And even if you're watching this days after, we're that, that, that Kazemi energy, which is just like, oh, it is Mercury because it blasts open. It's the, the, it's like the kiss from the sun for both Saturn, which is a great philosopher, deep understanding, 
re reaping or re it's like um it's like um extracting all that they can from every experience learning as much as you can from everything that you that you come across that's the saturn energy what did you learn what did you learn what can you take what riches can you take with you as you move forward in your life and then we have mercury who is like i said he's all about that information and so when they do this kazemi with the sun they're at the same degree as the sun both planets are on february 28th it will be this like this beautiful array that happens within and around you to give you fantastic ideas with deep understanding about how to move forward with that and about this why it's so important to you uh, so so now the energies will still be very supportive for weeks to come from this okay i mean you can't have something that big that cosmic and not have a ripple effect out all right also coming from this coming out of the full moon that was in virgo which is all about details right so and and shining the spotlight on the details of our life and and what we're we're looking to create so this time to be able to write this out with the support of your higher self is literally and pisces energy <laughs> is literally what will be the most supportive of being able to do this you don't have to limit it to just the year you can do it for the month you can do it each day and it doesn't just need to be maybe as we feel our way through this piscean season it's a really good reminder that we can feel or how important it is to feel our way through everything first to be able to feel what energy we are in and to be able to direct that energy in a way that is pleasing unto us by stepping out ahead of it invoking our higher self coming to peace getting quiet and then letting the natural forces of the universe give us answers bring us opportunities and be able to unfold i did this at the beginning of the year and i have seen without a doubt support the energies the decisions that i'm making the ability to be sharper on the things that i'm moving forward with the impact that this practice has had on my life there is no doubt in my mind that i am fully and completely supported by spirit and the key is to come from it from a place of already doneness again in peace the entire journey human experience is first and foremost an emotional journey this is how our spirit is speaking to us it is through emotions we label our ability to detect discern energy by feelings we label it emotions feeling into anything that you're being honest and present and non-judgmental of everything that you're feeling gives way to your natural vibration and communication with your spirit of what is possible and then knowing that only from this place of connection will i speak or act i encourage you to rest eat well drink plenty of water it's a water it's water water is you know the great conductor of electricity our spirits are electricity drink that water play laugh have fun spirit is not serious and nothing serious is really going on or happening it's not serious you guys play and have fun and watch the universe play back with you again i have no doubt that everything that i desire and i can take the pressure off of my human self and enjoy my creations enjoy the journey and I don't know about you guys, but I have found it much easier to laugh this year than in the last several years. And I feel like this year is is lightening up. We're, it, it, the energy is much lighter, which, which gives way to manifestation happening much faster. 
we have the ability to enjoy without pushing ourselves anymore. Don't act from a place of pressure. Don't act from a place of being of pushing yourself. Take a pause. Take a breath. That breath of, of, of life force energy. The breath is also spirit. It's the last thing to leave the body when you die. Your spirit is breathing. It's the breath of life. Do some breathing exercises. But quiet your mind. Come into your body by feeling your way into peace and love and harmony. And I would love to hear from each of you about how this is going, how you are feeling, and if this practice began to work for you as much as it's worked for me. I love you all, and I will see you next week.